In this video, we will introduce the concept of naming compounds. There are two naming systems, and it simply depends on what types of elements are being um, bonded together. So we're essentially just going to talk about compounds that contain two atoms, or what we call diatomic molecules. Diatomic or diatomic compounds, not molecules. I want to make that. So diatomic means that there are two atoms. Okay? And it all depends on what types of elements that we are looking at. So there are two naming systems. There is the ionic naming system and the covalent naming system. And let's go through these steps to determine whether it's ionic or covalent. Okay, so one more thing to note before we go on. Just to think about naming, you've got covalent and ionic. Regardless of anything, if it's a covalent compound, it's going to be um, two or more nonmetals. Or two nonmetals, right? And that includes the metalloids as well. All right, um, and ionic is going to be a metal. Generally, it's going to be a metal plus a non-metal. So this is where you have to know the trends on your periodic table. Know that your metals are mainly on the left-hand side, and your and your um, non-metals are going to be found on the right-hand side. Sometimes ionic compounds. So it'll either be um, a metal plus a non-metal or a metal plus a polyatomic ion for these ionic compounds. And we have a special case too with that I'll mention as we go through the video. <clears throat> All right, so this is the first thing you look at. Do I have a metal and a non-metal or do I have two non-metals? Well, if I have a metal and a non-metal, we were going to consider that it's covalent. So is there a metal or an NH4 found in the compound that you're given? Right? Let's say you're given a compound, you're given the formula of the compound. And you want to name it from the formula. Do you see a metal? Well, how do you know it's a metal? It's going to be on the left-hand side of your periodic table. And if you see it NH4, then you know that we're going to name it as an ionic compound. All right, so how do we name it? Well, always you're going to see the positive ion is going to be first. The positive ion is always first. How do we name that ion? Depends on what it is. So if it's ammonium, you just name it ammonium. If it's NH4+, that's just the ammonium polyatomic ion and it keeps its name. All right, so we've already looked at if the positive ion is ammonium, but what if, the, what if your positive ion is a metal? So these are, oh, sorry, these are metals. Okay, so if it's a type one metal, it's gonna be from group 1A, 2A, or aluminum. And there's only one charge associated with those ions, all right? Group one is going to have a plus one. Group two is going to have a plus two. And aluminum is plus three, okay? Those are the charge on those ions. Whereas the type two metals are those transition metals. And they have variable charges. And what that means is they can have more than one charge. OK. So just like tin that has a plus 2 and plus 4 charges. And the reason why we have to give it a different naming system is that we're going to name those charges using Roman numeral system. Okay, so 
type 1, if it's, uh, if it's one of these group 1A, group 2A, or aluminum, we just give it its name. It's monatomic. We give it its name. If it is uh, one of these transition metals, we're going to give the name of the charge of that atom. Now, what is our negative ion? If our negative ion is just a monoatomic, meaning it's just one atom, we're going to drop the ending of its name and add I. So let's say if I have oxygen, that's O, or if I have O2 minus, that's just going to be oxide. So we drop off the we drop off the ending and add I. Okay? If we have a polyatomic ion, you just pretty much got to learn polyatomic ions. Okay? <laughs> you've got to learn to, you, you've just got to memorize your polyatomic ions. And we'll go over this little bit in our practice. Okay, so we've discussed ionic naming. Now on to covalent naming. If we have no metal found in our compound, there's no metal atoms, they're just all nonmetals or metalloids or halogens or something like that, then we know that we're going to use the covalent naming system. So if the compound that you're given starts with an H, it's generally an acid, and we're not going to talk about acids in this video. We're just mainly going to talk about diatomic molecules, <clears throat> diatomic compounds. We call covalent compounds molecules. That's why I keep saying that. All right, so if it's not an acid and we just have two nonmetals, we are going to use prefix numbers uh, to indicate the number of atoms that are present in the formula, right? So if I've got, so depending on the number, we use mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. I'm not going any farther than that. So the first, the first name keeps its name, but you add the prefix. The second atom that you see, you still have to add the prefix, but it's just like when we did that ionic naming, where we drop the ending and add I. Okay? So you're going to drop the ending and add I. So let's say we have, uh, here are my favorites, CO and CO2. So how do we know the difference between these two compounds? They have the same elements present. Well, this is carbon monoxide. Notice that since we only have one carbon, we don't name it monocarbon monoxide. We just give it that name. And then our second compound is carbon dioxide. Notice that when I wrote monoxide, I didn't put two O's in there. I dropped the last vowel from mono, and because that would be monooxide. That's what it is. Monooxide. All right. Here we have. The polyatomic ions, the ones that you should know, I'm going to say all of them, but I'll, I'll be nice. And these are the ones that you should specifically know. Let's see. These, hydroxide is a big one, phosphate, carbonate, bicarbonate, acetate, chromate, cyanide. These are all really important for you to memorize. 